When I heard that AMC had started its own game division, I was shocked yet pleasantly surprised to see another entertainment publisher dip their toes into video games. After all, one of my favorite publishers, Annapurna Interactive, has more than succeeded in this venture, so that's why I was cautiously optimistic to cover AMC's second title, The Magnificent Truffle Pigs, a new first person adventure from the lead designer of Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. Let's see how this one turned out. But before we jump into this review, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to stay up to date whenever I put up another video. You can also join my Discord server for free with the link in the description. With all that said, let's jump into this review starting with its story. The Magnificent Truffle Pigs takes place in the northern English village of Stanning. It's the calming summertime and Beth is a moderately successful young woman with the life plan of becoming a CEO of the company she's working at, having kids, and settling down. She's gotten it figured out, or so she thinks. Back in the village for a week, she visits the local farm she once spent a summer metal detecting on. Back then, she found an earring that got her a pretty penny, and now as an adult, she's eager to find the other half of the pair before the farm permanently closes at the end of the week. With this being her last chance of completing the story of her childhood, she calls her friend Adam, that's us, a childhood friend with a bit of a romantic history. Together the two look for this earring, uncovering much more than Beth originally bargained for. It's a story of love, loss, and coming of age. The story is told across the span of a week with each day taking place in a different section of the farm, while also communicating over a pair of walkie-talkies. While I enjoyed the premise behind the adventure, the ending felt a bit abrupt. Over the course of the week, I could sense this climactic realization and discussion that never really came, or at least when it did, it didn't live up to the build-up. With that said, there were clever moments like subverting expectations through repetition and change that were genuinely good, though at the cost of the game occasionally feeling repetitive. My overall playthrough time took about 3 hours or so, so it should be noted how short this game is when assessing its gameplay loop. Being the first person adventure game, or walking simulator as some people like to label these games, I hate that by the way. There's not a lot of depth when it comes to mechanics. Adam grabs a metal detector, shovel, and trowel, and spends a week going through the fields of this English village. Every day we travel to a new section of the farm with new views and areas to explore. The day-to-day -day gameplay loop doesn't really change. You walk around the field looking for any hints of metal in the ground. Sometimes you might come across a coin, an old rusted nail, or something more. Regardless, the process is the same. You detect the metal, follow its trail, dig it up, and report back to Beth over the walkie-talkie. Even over the short runtime, I found the process to feel repetitive rather quickly. There are moments where this does change and it does breathe fresh air into the gameplay, at times subverting expectations and making those moments feel more impactful. While these moments are interesting, they weren't monumental in the sense that the repetition led to this grand payoff, or at least not one that felt well worth the 3 hours of metal detecting. What does feel impactful is the choices that you can make during conversations. With every treasure you find, you pull up your phone, take a picture of it, and send it to bed. This sparks a conversation between the two, occasionally bringing up some elements of the past that you can learn more about, depending on the conversation options you make. I really liked that, because it did capture that feeling of talking to someone you hadn't seen in a very long time, that feeling of catching up despite having such a history together. In regards to replay value, you can beat this game without finding all of the treasures that there are to find in this game. Likewise, you do have the new game plus option, where you can restart the game and get the chance to complete the game and find all of its treasures. Outside of that, there isn't really a reason to go back and play. Despite my grievances with its pacing and its gameplay loop, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention how lovely this game looked. Exploring the farmland, I was presented with some lovely looking vistas and sceneries of this tranquil English village. The bright and saturated grasslands loomed over me as I walked over the meadows. Every day as the sun went down, I'd be presented with a jaw-dropping sunset parallel to the different sights of this farm like the windmills looking down the hill. It was marvelous. I personally played on a PC running an RTX 3060 and I had no issues running this at the full 1080p60 on max settings. It should be noted that this game is also coming to Nintendo Switch, although I didn't have the chance to play this version in time for a review. If you plan on picking this up specifically for that version, just be warned that I can't speak much regarding its performance, although nothing in this game felt all that intensive. When it comes to audio, Magnificent Truffles doesn't spend too much time on its music and atmosphere. The overall tone of the game is quiet and tranquil. The songs used in the menu and credits, for example, ultimately help capture that. However, the real eye catcher here is the performances done by Arthur Darville as Adam and Lucy Fish as Beth. Both come from an entertainment background outside of video games and more than deliver on a fantastic performance here. Together the two capture that sense of awkward history between a young once very close couple 
now both on different paths of life, yet still clinging onto that bit of history that's there. The Magnificent Truffle Pigs is a flawed adventure game that takes you down memory lane between once close lovers, now just trying to grasp at something that feels familiar, something that feels like home. Its premise easily caught my attention, but the delivery of the story through its repetitive gameplay, leading up to a rather lackluster in comparison ending, left me a bit lukewarm on the project as a whole. I very much enjoyed the chemistry and performance between the cast, along with the pretty looking backdrops, but everything else felt somewhat subpar. If you're in the mood for a slow but somewhat deep story, I think the game has the potential to scratch that itch, although I'd recommend waiting for a sale on this one. Thank you very much for watching my review, I hope you guys found it useful and informative. What are you guys playing this week? I know it's been a sort of chill week in terms of releases, so I'm curious to hear what everyone's playing. Maybe by the time this review goes up, we'll have the long-awaited Nintendo Switch Pro announcement too. Anyway, I'm going to jump back onto the Discord server, which you can too, it's free to join in the link in the description.